Last week saw hundreds of farmers owing allegiance to Bharatiya Kisan Union Ekta Ugraha camping here in Chandigarh. They were protesting and demanding that the draft agricultural policy prepared by the Aam Aadmi Party government be implemented as soon as possible. The impasse between the protesting farmers and the government finally ended with uh, the farmer union leaders holding a meeting with Chief Minister Bhagwan Singh Man and his cabinet colleagues. The whole issue has again brought back into focus the agricultural policy. After all, this was not the first policy to have been drafted in, in the state. Today on this show of Decode Punjab, we have with us Mr. Ajay Veer Jakhar, who is uh, the former head of the Punjab Farmers Commission and uh, he brought out a farmers policy, if I may say so. Uh, so sir, could you just uh, tell us what exactly was this farmers policy that you brought out? So, uh, thank you for having me on the show and it's a, <coughs> it's a question I've been wanting to answer. Uh, when I joined as chairman of the Punjab State mm -hmm. Farmers Commission, to better understand issues of the state, <coughs> we went to different agriculture departments over many months, met with senior officers, junior officers, we went to Punjab Agriculture University, met with scientists, students, farmers, and we realized that Punjab needed a, uh, a policy and it, surprisingly Punjab has never had an agriculture policy, though you, even though it's an agrarian state. We reached out to the state and we suggested that we wanted to do a policy. The government officials said you could do an agriculture policy and we suggested to do a farmer's policy because I think there is a difference between the two kinds of policies. So what is the difference between a farmer's policy and, a, and an <coughs> agriculture policy? An agriculture policy will basically deal with agriculture production which I think is a secondary subject. Hmm. The primary subject is farmer livelihoods. So a farmer's policy deals with farmer livelihoods, about making them equitable, about improving their livelihoods. And basically, we define farmer as someone who is economically dependent on the primary production from land, hmm. which could be landowners, small and marginal farmers, it could be large farm owners, it could be farm workers, hmm. and those who are, whose lives depend on it. Hmm. And that we thought was the primary focus of a policy should be. Okay. So what were your uh, main recommendations, sir? Oh, we had tons of recommendations. Even though, even though our policy was uh, just 10 to 15 pages, but we had uh, that's quite a that's quite a contrast because we hear that the new agriculture policy being drafted now is 1600 pages policy. I think so. If I spent my whole lifetime, I couldn't do 1600 pages. So our capacity was to do 15 pages. We mm -hmm. did 15 pages of policy. Fine. I think when we made the policy, uh, the important part was that what did we. Why did we make the policy the way we did? Uh, one of the things was we gave a revenue neutral policy because we realized that Punjab was in a financially in a very precarious state and did not have resources to deploy. Mm -hmm. So it was a revenue neutral policy where the savings would arise from the suggestions that were in the policy and they could be used for other purposes as we will talk later. Mm -hmm. So the farmer you unions had, uh, let me just say this yeah. because this is important, the farmer unions wanted us to give suggestions for the union central government hmm. but we insisted that this was a policy for the state government and it was not right for us to give suggestions to the union government so our suggestions were solely focused on what the state could do mm -hmm. uh, rather than because that was what we were mandated to do so what is it that you recommended that the state should be doing and uh, along with this i just like to ask you since you mentioned that your policy was a very revenue ne neutral policy yes. one of the major expenses that is going uh, or the subsidy, I, I, it's wrong to call it expenses. One of the major subsidies that is going to agriculture is the power subsidy. Mm -hmm. So what were your recommendations with regard to power subsidy? If you could just brief us. So lots of people told us not to touch <coughs> a topic as a <coughs> controversial, as politically sensitive topic, but then, you know, not being in politics, uh, we did, really didn't care about mm. what people said. Mm. And we gave out very specific suggestions on power subsidy. First we said is that power subsidy, the eligibility for have for availing of power subsidy should be limited to those who were eligible for PM Kisan only. Okay. So that cut off a lot of people. Hmm. Second we said was that those who own four hectares of land, which is 10 acres or more, they should get subsidized power subsidized by 33 okay. percent and should they use uh, micro irrigation should they use uh, you know More water saving water techniques, saving techniques uh, technologically advanced saving techniques we could give them 66 percent subsidy of those okay. owning more than 10 10 acres of land mm -hmm. we also said that not to allow paddy cultivation on panchayat lands and not to allow farmers to do more than 10 acres of paddy per, 
per family okay. which means we were trying to restrict paddy cultivation also because it's a water water guzzling crop <clears throat> we also said that the free residential electricity should be limited to socially and economically backward sections only it should not be available for the every free residential so electricity, electricity for, for rural households or for or rural households or for, for for all domestic consumers we actually use the word rural because that's what yeah. we are focused on but yeah. to restrict it to social and economically backward uh, sections of society only okay so but the interesting part of the <coughs> how it was revenue neutral was that we said ki whatever comes out of this savings that come out of it hmm. 50% should go into primary health care centers in primary health care in the rural areas and 50% should go for rural education okay. because the so you want to slow back the entire savings into social causes not social causes the, the, in developing the, yeah. human capacity yeah, that people yeah. become you yeah. know they are able to fend for themselves hmm. and hmm. and that was the most important part of the policy hmm. so hmm. we try to generate revenue by curtailing expenses and at the same time uh, using them for other purposes okay so uh, since uh, you know you've touched upon the po uh, the topic of uh, the rural households getting <coughs> free power uh, you know uh, there's been this whole talk nowadays about uh, 9000 old politically very uh, well connected people who ensured that when the rural agriculture feeders were uh, were separated from the domestic feeders uh, feeders these are the people who continued to get power from uh, you know the domestic feeders to ensure that uh they, uh, uh they they get 24 hours of supply so uh did you touch upon this this aspect in the policy no this aspect was very clear that one person no that aspect is not important it's a governance issue what you're talking about yeah, is a governance yeah. since issue your, since your policy See, also looked into governance first, issues that is why i'm asking first you. chapter hmm. in the in the policy was on governance hmm. and it was a first in the world i think because nobody else has a chapter on governance in a policy hmm. and these are governance issues this is not the politician's fault that he has he he applied influence and and the officer did it so i think it's something that it is a governance issue it's not a big issue hmm. the department has to But look into you, it since you touched on governance in mm -hmm. your policy so what were these aspects also discussed no but it gets covered in other ways of how accountability comes in mm -hmm. we we wanted a whistle blower act mm -hmm. we wanted block level committees to look at welfare programs delivery okay. we wanted community to be involved with okay. we wanted gram sabhas to be videographed you know when you do this community stakeholder consultations when you involve them in decision making and implementation these things will come out on their own so you it were, was a more holistic policy yes, that looked holistic into policy. not just the agriculture but into each and every aspect, aspect of, of uh, the farmers life farmers life and how to improve governance how to improve transparency mm. accountability and mm. how to ensure that you mm. actually achieve some of your objectives okay uh such a beautiful policy why Thank was you it for not that. <laughs> yeah i remember having covered it so i know it was such a beautiful <coughs> policy why did the government shy away from implementing it i think so, you know punjab has witnessed 40 years of uh, congress government mm. akali dal government mm. and now aap government mm. and i think all the political parties lack political vision capacity and will power to to take decisions which are you know maybe which may not be populist which may lose them votes and a leadership but in spite of the fact that uh, the congress had come with such a thumping majority so even aap has come with a thumping That's majority right. and That's i right. i'm saying but they all but they've come riding on uh, on on these sops so i think is when the leadership of a state places interests their personal interests and their family interests over the interests of the state the state is bound to suffer so you I, mean I, that I, I during the congress time the interests of a particular leader were over and above the interests of the state i think so why congress i think even it's happening now those interests could be political they could be financial they But could be but we are asking about the the non implementation of the policy yes, during I'm, the congress yes i'm saying time. for all the last few chief ministers i my personal opinion is that <coughs> they have placed their own personal interests mm. over the interests of the state mm. and the state has <coughs> excuse me has suffered because mm. of that mm. consequently for the first time punjab's average income is less than india's average like okay. punjab's income is less than india's average i think so the first time it's happened yeah, in decades yeah that's right and the rural indebtedness also i think is amongst the highest in the state yes and that is in spite of the fact that punjab's agriculture income is higher than everybody else mm. per capita mm. agriculture household income That's is higher right. than everybody mm. else mm. and because of this uh, in effect uh, incompetencies in the leadership i think uh, it will be difficult even with the most charitable outlook i can say that 
uh, the best legacy that these past chief ministers can have is that people forget them mm -hmm. because and I think that would be a big blessing for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are your views on crop diversification? You know, I mean, I'm asking you uh, this specifically because for as long as I can remember when I was a student, which is, you know, a good a uh, quarter of a century uh, ago. I remember uh, the whole topic of crop diversification used to be discussed because I was a student of PAU. So I remember crop diversification was on everybody's agenda. But you know, 25 years down the line, I don't see crop diversification hap happening. So I think to understand crop diversification, first we need to get understand the circumstances and the context of where we are. Hmm. Quickly saying that uh, we, we are, our water levels are going down. The biodiversity is a big problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Damage to biodiversity is a big problem. Uh, and with climate change happening, temperatures are going to rise, rise, glaciers are going to recede. And these, these are problems that happen. The lesser, the other problem because of lack of diversification is that man days of work created on a paddy field is less than half of other crops. So in the sense that wherever paddy cultivation happens as a, mo as, as a single crop, mm -hmm. uh, Farm workers get very little number of man days because most of the operations are mechanized. Hmm. So we need not we need to diversify not only because it's 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 because biodiversity is being uh, damaged, but because groundwater is depleting very fast. It's but a also guzzler. also we need more complexity in Punjab's agriculture and in its economy for it to actually thrive. Hmm. Uh, you know, a few days back, mm -hmm. we had some experts, uh, we had some agricultural experts on our show. Mm -hmm. And they said that the government of India deliberately does not want Punjab to go in for diversification. In fact, they gave us um, several instances where, uh, uh, you know, the government of India would say one thing at a public <coughs> function. But going back, they would come and tell the state uh, uh, agriculture department to ensure that, you know, there was no drop in the wheat and paddy. I, I, I watch uh, the Tribune show. So I, I yeah. did watch that show. I, yeah. I saw that show i think cultivation of paddy is like an intoxicant injected into punjab's economy by the central government but also at the same time punjab central government's uh, priorities shift based mm. on international commodity prices and if there is a drought in the country as they said in the show but we cannot hide from the fact that the state government also does not want to diversify because the, the economic state, risk is too high is the that economic, the reason the state revenues will get hit the yeah. multi board revenues will get hit hmm. and around 60 70000 crores is flowing into the punjab's economy because hmm. of uh, paddy procurement hmm. that will also get hit hmm. and neither does the state leadership have the political capital anymore because hmm. they've lost it hmm. they don't have the state administration does not have the capacity hmm. to make that shift to other crops mm -hmm. and i think the central government would be receptive to an idea hmm. if the state government was to come up with an idea hmm. but hmm. i think so the initiative has to come from the state government hmm. and of course uh, properly planned uh, a diversification can happen but the state government has to take the initiative. Mm -hmm. State government may not want, may not be in a position to contribute finances, but it will have to make changes in policy mm -hmm. uh, to receive central government uh, finances or grants or you know uh, dole outs for for this to happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, in the past couple of years, ever since the 2020 farmer struggle started in Delhi, the farmers have been demanding a legal guarantee uh, for MSP. Mm -hmm. You know, do you think that if a legal guarantee is given, which the centre has been shying away from. So, do you think if the legal guarantee is given, it will help in crop diversification? Will it promote crop diversification? So, let's, let's, so we are discussing in context to Punjab, so I will answer in context yeah, to yeah. Punjab. Mm -hmm. And I think many experts have propagated that MSP for other crops or mm -hmm. legal MSP will incentivize farmers in Punjab to diversify mm -hmm. to other crops. And I think that is completely wrong hmm. because Punjab farmers are already getting a price which is approximately something like what uh, C2 plus 50 hmm. and irrespective of that the main issue is that other crops the profitability from other crops is not even close to what they earn from paddy cultivation even if they were to give even if you were to give a similar kind of profit to a farmer as uh, to a paddy farmer to grow some other crops i doubt if they would shift because the weather risk of paddy is very limited mm -hmm. compared to something like moong or other crops mm -hmm. where 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 the risk of untimely rains and and other hazards is huge 
So I don't think so. It's going to happen. I think so. It's it's a uh, it's 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 a wrong advocacy, mm. and I think uh, everybody should rethink on this issue. Yeah. So, Mr. Thakur, you're also an orchardist. Mm -hmm. I mean, this year uh, the mm. there have been lots of instances. In fact, for the past two years, there have been lots of instances where uh, you know the uh, the people uh, in Abohar and Fazilka, the orchardists, mm -hmm. they have been actually throwing back uh, the orchards. Is it not a very profitable uh, uh, venture? And of course, it also hits the uh, attempts to diversify Punjab's agriculture. So I think uh, there has been, uh, for example, if you look at the citrus crop, hmm. now it's a kino, kino which is predominantly growing there, which is 90% or 80% of the citrus is one hmm. crop. Now, hmm. this is a crop that uh, Malta and Kino was something that was introduced in Punjab in 1956, 1965. Mm. My grandfather was amongst the many pioneers who did it at that time. Yeah. But we are still growing the same crop. Mm. After 70 years, we are still growing the same crop that our forefathers, our three generations may be growing the same crop. We don't have new citrus varieties. We so obviously. So it, who's it, responsible for this? Uh, I, I, is it is it is it the state agriculture department? Is it? I think is so. It's it a collective. I think so it's a collective responsibility of the scientists of the government to have brought new varieties, new crops, new new disease resistant varieties to come in. Also, we've had water logging issues that have happened. Salinity has come in, which reduces the immunity of the plants. Hmm. You even have uh, uh, you, you have other disease coming in. Okay. So I think it's a uh, and the prices were not good last year. Hmm. Uh, prices, but uh, uh, they but, crashed. Uh, but this year, last year, so le yeah. last year, if you say the prices, average prices was six to ten rupees or something. This year, the average price is going to be around twenty-five rupees. That so because of because because of less uh, production. Yeah, so it's it it it's is a cyclical thing. It's a cyclical thing in the sense hmm. that uh, last year, incidentally, was a very bad year, hmm. including for me, hmm. in the sense that uh, uh, for any farmer in Abhor, because you had a bumper kino ha uh, harvest and you even had a bumper santraka orange harvest in Maharashtra and other places. Mm -hmm. So when the citrus comes, it came all over the country and everywhere you time. had a bumper harvest yeah. and that led to a glut hmm. and a crash in uh, crash in prices. But so of course, Abhor requires diversification. Uh, as chairman of the Farmers Commission, we made an effort. We put up a center for animal husbandry for which the government is not giving funds. We put up a fishery center so people go, go into fishes. The government is not giving funds for that. We have an agro processing center for fruits and vegetables. So I think more funding is required, more focus from the government is required. Hmm. And that uh, you find that lacking today. Okay. So is there also a, a kind of a policy paralysis because a lot of policy is made by the center uh, in terms of agriculture and uh, the states actually have very little uh, in their hands in terms of policy. So is is that what led uh, is also leading to a lot of uh, problems we face in agriculture today? So yes, of course, uh, center has a lot of control. They have control over import export uh, duties, which they put. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then those import export duties that the center put has, they have their own uh, priorities of controlling inflation. It's not that it's not being controlled in Punjab. But of course, one has to uh, dovetail their programs with central government programs. We have to, uh, you know, structure our programs as as a country. We are we are one. So we it's not about. Uh, it's like every person wants to, uh, you know, uh, what do you call? It? Every person wants to take uh, wants control but does not want responsibility. Mm. So the center wants control, does not want responsibility. Mm. The mm. state government says I want control over my agriculture but I will not take responsibility of free power. Mm. I will not take responsibility of not filling extension officers posts. Mm. Mm. I will not take responsibility of filling vacancies in Punjab Agriculture University or Gadwasu. So these issues are there. Mm. The central government also has these uh, programs where they give money to states. Uh, what What is it called? Uh, uh, the AI, where, uh, the no, AI where, where they share where they share resources like central yeah, government gives yeah. sixty percent and mm -hmm. the state government gives forty percent. Mm. Since the devolution of the funds, where states get around forty one percent of the shares, the states have a choice. Mm. They could use that money to build human capacity. They could use that money to give uh, you know to give extension services. They could use that money to t uh, tackle disease. They could give use that money for other purposes. Mm. But uh, but the states use that money for giving uh, free bus rides. They use their money for religious tourism. They use their resources. The freebies. The, the freebies. freebies. And it's not something that is about Punjab. This is something that is common now. It's be it's 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 become it's the like no, a pandemic. A more more it's, of a more the freebies of a, have become yeah. like a pandemic. It's not yeah. a welfare program. Mm -hmm. So I think looking at states' resources, they have to be very careful on how they're going to invest those resources. Mm. Resources mm. are limited, mm. but uh, just to blame everything on the central government, 
is also not right. I think. You, you know, as a person who's been so involved in uh, agriculture and agriculture policy making, what do you have to say about uh, the fact that there is absolutely no no uh, investment into post harvest? Uh, uh, technologies or into post harvest uh, building of capacities in a state like Punjab, where the so, mainstay of the economy is agriculture. So, I, w I, we, I was trying to work out the economics of where Punjab's position is today. And uh, it works out, as per my calculations, that the per capita debt debt of the state is 1,38,000 rupees. So, mm. 1,38,000 rupees per person. Mm. And the capital investment, the question that you asked, yeah. per person is 1,800 rupees. Oh my God. Oh, so, that that's... is the factual position. Yeah. So, if the state is only going to invest 1,800 rupees mm. per capita, or for Punjab, I think so last year was 5,000 crore rupees was capital investment. Mm. I mean, there is no money for anything. Mm. So, we are very uh, quickly, unfortunately, going to come to a position that the endless subsidies will have to end in some form or the other. We, someone will have to take a political call on this. Mm -hmm. We are not in a very happy position. We are not in a good position at all. So, do you, do you uh, coming back to the farmers, uh, the, the free power to farmers, do you recommend free power to farmers? No, I've do you, do you already, support it? No, I have already said that, you know, uh, when there is a problem of finances, I think so bigger shoulders will have to bear the bigger burden. Hmm. And uh, I think uh, free power, as, 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 as we suggested in the policy, can be curtailed and it can only go for, it should not be given to farmers who, who are not eligible for PM Kisan. It should only be eligible for those who have PM Kisan. It should be only available to farmers who own around seven and a half acres of land. This is a political call. It could That's be five right. acres, it could be seven and a half acres. When we made the policy, and uh, I think so, one thing that must be mentioned is that we had a lot of support from uh, farmer unions. Uh, when we made the policy and I don't remember farmer unions criticizing the policy we made mm. and mm. even though we had talked about curtailing mm. Uh, mm. curtailing free power okay okay on that note uh, we'd like to thank you for joining us for this discussion uh, I do also want to add yeah. a point that the farmers policy was not my policy you keep referring it to as my policy it no, was, a, it was a policy you, yeah, which, it uh, was a policy of the headed. farmers commission but we had a team yeah. the leadership of that team was with Balvinder Sidhu. We had a very competent uh, uh, officer from the Ministry of Agriculture, Aishwarya Sharma, who was very good. Mm. We had support of uh, Suresh Kumarji, mm. uh, Secretary Suresh Kumarji and Vishwajit Khanna. So it was actually a team effort. And yeah. it, I mean, I just need to put it on record because yeah. we should not refer to things yeah. Yeah. As, as we own them. It, it, it w couldn't have happened without yeah. the team. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us. Uh, dear viewers, on that note, we'd like to end this episode of Decode Punjab. Please continue to read your favorite newspaper, which is the Tribune. Please continue to follow us on all our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter and on Instagram. And please press the bell icon and continue to follow us on the social media. Thank you so much.